Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and peace, love, and salutation to you. I came out there that's pushing His truth, true sincerity. All right, this is a response to this knucklehead Chief Ephraim. Uh, you can't see his comp, you can't see his face or his avatar, but above the brother GMS Spiritual Temple, Chief Ephraim says, "You niggas just be reaching for anything and everything. Get a backbone and stop being putty cats." Now, this is a response to a video that Apostle Bar did about uh, not being spiritual, uh, not being uh, action figures and wearing on his camouflage, which is um circumspect for the times that we're in you know you don't want to be out there looking like a black panther movement but you got some guys in israel who are just spiritual retards and they, they don't know how to be circumspect but they call themselves chief chief this chief that i'm a chief high priest i'm a chief this but don't have an ounce of common sense that hey we're not supposed to be wearing that out here so this guy chief ephraim he's got his panties in a bunch you know this guy's like a woman that bleeds every month okay you know, instead of taking the rebuke and being a leader, okay? Because leaders get rebuked, man, okay? Leader, uh, if you come into this thing, you consider yourself a leader, you're going to get told about yourself. So this guy got told about himself, and then he started to uh, whine like a woman that bleeds once a month, okay? He got he got, he, he got menstrual cramps when Apostle Gabar corrected, corrected him. It says the most highest and I don't know what he's mean by that, never gave us a spirit of fear. And you guys are just playing your lot of being zealots, man. All right? You got to be circumspect out here, man. It says, I guess we got to wear Idaho potato sacks like y'all for garments and only wear fringes at camp, right? And and that goes into being circumspect. Why would you want to wear fringes just going to the grocery store in this time that we're in, this time of persecution? This guy obviously doesn't understand the scriptures, man. So I want to get into this point of sackcloth, man, because this guy obviously doesn't understand the meaning of wearing sackcloth. So let me just pause this, all right, and just go to the definition of sackcloth, because it is prophesied in the scriptures that we will prophesy in sackcloth. You know, we're not out here to wear the fancy $1,000 garments with the uh, $100 armbands, okay? All right, the definition here is coarse cloth worn as a sign of mourning or penitence okay when you go into that word penitence it's an action of feeling sorrowful or, re or remorseful or regret for your actions okay so we come at this thing okay we we're in that uh um psalms 51 51 spirit man we're broken down we're of a contrite and humble spirit and these guys don't obviously understand that that's why we're out there with the sackcloth okay but these guys want to wear their fringes to work, wear their fringes to Kroger, wear their fringes to courthouse. Even though New York Times is basically uh, uh, demonized us for saying this fringe group. So it's not circumspect to wear fringes everywhere. You know, what is wrong with these guys, man? You know, that's the definition of sackcloth. Cor coarse cloth worn as a sign of mourning or penitence. We're in the house of mourning, man. A lot of these guys think they're in the kingdom already, man. Okay. Matter of fact, um, let me get that scripture right quick. Not Exodus, lock you. But um, I want to get uh, Ecclesiastes 7. Okay. All right, Ecclesiastes 7, as soon as it loads up. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1, a good name is better than precious ointment in the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to heart. You got these Israelites doing mixtapes and having all these Israelite parties. It's better to be in the house of mourning to know what's really going on out here, man. Verse 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. All right, your mind is made better because you know what's coming down the pipeline. All right, all you Israelites that come up against us, 
and say we're haters and we're niggas and all this stuff, it doesn't negate the fact that Esau still has concentration camps and, and FEMA coffins and hollow tip bullets and guillotines, okay? So get that through your head for all you other Israelite camps, okay? Chief Ephraim and the crew, Sakari, uh, AOI, okay, HOI, you know, all these other camps that always want to come against Great Millstone. We're telling you the, the, the straight skinny of what's going to happen out here through prophecy because none of you guys seem to prophesy any damn way, okay? Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. All right, verse 5. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise, hearing rebuke from Apostle Gabar, than for a man to hear the song of fools. And you guys make like to make a lot of foolish songs. These, these damn rap songs that don't make any sense, man. You try to ask them, what is the mark of the beast? But then subliminally, you'll put them into your, uh, your, your little raps just to get some clout out here, man. You know? So we're supposed to be in the house of mourning. That's that's why we wear sackcloth, dummies. We're supposed to wear sackcloth to be mournful, that to, to be mourning, to be to have a penitence about yourself. All the stuff that we did in the world, we're sorrowful for it. All right, a lot of us came in reading the scriptures about committing adultery, being a sorcerer, eating pork, wearing idols upon your neck, going to these churches. Okay, not worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. We're sorrowful for that, and we continue to pray to the Lord for that, man. Okay, but these guys, they have no understanding. All right, this is um, Proverbs 21 and um, 16. It says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And this guy, Chief Ephraim, and all these other camps who don't have the sound doctrine, they're just, they're spiritually z dead zombies, man. They're like the walk, spiritually walking dead. You know, they can talk a good game and look tough, but they have no spiritual understanding. They don't even know what it means to be circumspect and, you know, walking out here with the fringe t-shirts, man. We're, we're, out, we're, the, we're commanded, yes, we're commanded to wear the fringes according to Numbers 15, okay, but that's not circumspect to walk to the local uh, uh, gas station, okay, to get some yaya and wearing your fringe T-shirt. That's that's not wise, man. It's not wise to go into a a, a department clothing store with fringes on your T-shirt, man. You're making yourself a target. It's a purpose for wearing sackcloth, and that's to wear that camp. We're mourning that camp, all right. When we go to camp, we're, we're it's an altar to the Lord, and we're mourning to the Lord to deliver us week in week out. So what do these guys not understand? You know why? Because they're in the they're the congregation of the dead. They're spiritually dead, man. All right, they don't understand. They think this is some type of trend. A lot of these guys, like the apostle said, they're agents. They're either agents for Esau or agents for Satan, or they're just completely stupid. They just spiritually can't get rights. And this, and then I'm gonna bring out this other scripture that Apostle Gabar mentioned in his lesson. All right, Revelation one. And um, three, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth. A lot of Israelites just simply don't read. They read, they read uh, Deuteronomy twenty-eight, and Jeremiah um ten and two, Jeremiah fourteen and two. You know they don't even read Yahushai and how he suffered, how he um. Uh, was a non-violent man and how he had to suffer to uh be to sit on the right hand side of the most high. They don't read Paul's readings, all right, because they 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 out there with their head covered, okay. You know they don't, they don't read any of the epistles that Paul had. They don't read Revelation. They can't even break it down to Mark of the Beast. So they just read Deuteronomy twenty eight. They read Jeremiah fourteen and two, Jeremiah ten, and that's a bit that's basically it for these guys, man. They read a few scriptures. They read Galatians. You know, 4 and 26, where it talks about Jerusalem is the mother of us all. They read those scriptures, but that that's basically it. They don't even get into the nuclear destruction. They don't, the, the scriptures say the spirit of Yahweh Shah is a spirit of prophecy, man. And these guys simply did not prophesy. They just jump up and down like a bunch of monkeys on the block, man. They want to go down to um, parts of Georgia and, and, and go get land and, and go vote for some, uh, 
bootleg Israelite who's running for a, a mayor of the city or some type of uh, a city council member, man. They don't read the scriptures and apply them, and they don't apply these scriptures, man. Okay. And um, there was something else I had on here. All right, let's get that definition of penitence. All right, let's see if it pops up. Let's see, my phone's starting to act up. All right, penitence. The action of feeling or showing sorrow and regret for having done wrong, repentance. So the actual act of having sackcloth on is an act of repentance. And a lot of guys just simply haven't repented to you how about Shimei Al Shai, man. They think they got it all. They think they're the first one on the chariot. They don't even they don't even these guys don't even they don't even get into the chariots, man. It's just we hate Esau and that's basically it with these guys, man. These guys are just one these guys are just one level Israelites, man. They're not even deep. Alright? So I'm gonna get into an account where David was actually wearing sackcloth. Okay, and these guys say, oh, we're the house of David, and, okay, man, whatever. All right, this is uh, 1 Chronicles 21. I'm going to just read it through. All right. <clears throat> 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And what do we got coming up in 2020, this, the, the, the census? All right, so we're not supposed to number the children of Israel, but what does Esau do? He gives you a census every 10 years and he tries to count everybody, all right? That's going against the scriptures. And David said unto Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I might know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be, because the scriptures say our people is the sand of the sea. But my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause to trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, or for Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to, it, came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword, and Judah was fourscore so like it was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And the most high was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto the most high, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing, but now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So see, David went off, trying to count the name, trying to count the number of the children of Israel. Okay? And the Lord spake unto Gad, David seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus say the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came unto David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee. Either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thy enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said uh, unto Gad, I, I am in a great strait, let me fall now into the hand of the Lord for very great are his mercies but let me not fall into the hand of man so the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel and there fell of Israel 70,000 men and this is a for simply counting the children of Israel all right but Esau he does everything at verse to the scriptures all right and uh point is in 16 let me read 15 and the Most High sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of evil, and said to the angel that destroyed it, It is enough 
stay now, stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand, stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in a sackcloth, fell upon their faces. All right. So this is what uh, King David did. OK. So you're not you're not you're not coming up, up against the apostles and elders, Greg Millstone. You're coming up against the house of David for saying that we're not supposed to wear sackcloth, bro. We're not supposed to, we're supposed to be like you guys. Yeah, if you consider to be the house of David, you're supposed to wear sackcloth, you dummy. All right? King David wore sackcloth because he was mourning. He sinned. The same thing that the potential house of David, the, the elect, Lord willing, be part of that number do. We go out to the highways and byways. We wear sackcloth. Where we have a, a great penitence upon our countenance. And we, and we continue to beg the Lord to deliver us, man. So what the hell are you talking about, Chief Ephraim, man? So, hey, man, Lord willing, that was edifying, man. Like, hey, man, don't listen to these other guys, man. Listen to the Apostles and Elders Great Millstone. For you men out there that watch these other videos, don't watch these dummies, man. They don't read. They're just jar heads. They're just muscle heads. And they're just blowing a bunch of hot air, man. They don't actually read and get into these accounts of when the men of the Lord actually wear sackcloth. And there's plenty of other ones. So let me get into this last scripture. Was probably was my first one, but um, this is uh one of the scriptures I go to about reading um, watch wearing sackcloth. It's Jeremiah six and twenty six. It says, "O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes." That's a sign of being humble, man. Asking the Lord to forgive you for the past sins that you've done in your past life your present life before you came into the truth, and, and now you're in the truth, man. But you got guys that think they got it all together, all right? They, 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 they all, they're coming up against, how the hell are you coming up against the second man in Israel, man? Okay, we got Apostle Tahar as the top man in Israel, and then you're going to come up against his number two and calling him a nigga? Do you not know that comes with consequences, my man? All right, so he's trying, simply trying to teach your dumb behind of the importance of wearing sackcloth and not wearing these military garments, and I conduct yourself as a king and a priest, and, and you got a dummy that's calling himself, a, calling the, the number two in command of all Israel a nigga. So the Most High is going to deal with you, man. It says, make thee mourning. That goes that it's better to be in the house of mourning, man. That's why you wear sackcloth. You don't wear these $60 t-shirts with fringes on it, man. That's of the world. That's a, that's a nigga-like spirit. As for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. So we're, we're mourning, man. We're mourning for the better days to come. But right now, we're catching pure hell. So I don't know what you're talking about, Chief Ephraim, man. So like I said, man, don't listen to these guys, man. They don't know what you're talking about. They simply do not read. And they are totally disrespectful, man. Okay? So with that, Shalom.